Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, NXT Review Series for the 13th of um, April, 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 2010. Uh, highlights opening the program with, in fact, uh, um, you know, the keg deal from last week and Kane and all of that from last week. So much time wasted on this program. I hate highlight programs, I really do. I understand why they're done from a... Uh, promotional standpoint, although I've always thought that, in fact, uh, having highlight programs wherein, you know, you have uh, a bunch of guys managing to go in directions that don't uh, bode well for their future and or you're just wasting time just doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense. Uh, anyway, we open uh, with this particular program with... Uh, uh, a lot of talk in the direction of various people and, um, you know, highlights on the various uh, who's going to win, who's going to lose type thing. We kind of see a podium put forward by the masters that be, uh, and guys are given about 30 seconds to get, get things over. I don't know if this is scripted or unscripted. I don't know if the guys were allowed to know what was coming at them, but this is the goofiest thing I've ever seen. Such a waste of time um, in terms of they literally have guys cut short promos on random words. Daniel Bryan was to, was to cut a promo on the word um, passion, and he ta starts talking about the manliness meter, and then Wade Barrett talks about blasé and how he's not blasé, but other people are, and just completely goofy stuff, which... Maybe if you're doing a vaudeville show, or maybe if you're not trying to get people over, this was interesting. It actually comes from something that's done behind the scenes in wrestling. The random promo class is done in almost every independent and every, um, every uh, I guess, national deal, where they just have you get up and talk about random things to see if you can talk on command. Justin Gabriel talks about flowers and how he doesn't really care about flowers. Uh, Heath Slater talks about cereal and the various types of cereal. The crowd boos the heck out of this. Um, David Otunga talks about sleep and how he doesn't get very much. Uh, Skip Sheffield is supposed to talk about rainbows and doesn't talk about any of it. Basically gets himself over with the crowd screaming, yep, 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 in his general direction. Um, and Tarver doesn't say anything. And... Uh, Darren Young insinuates the crowd doesn't brush their teeth. This is how we actually use television time on something that is, or even internet streaming time on something that people are supposed to take reasonably seriously. Anyway, we're down to a promo off between Skip Sheffield, who talks about uh, not not dropping the keg, not uh, others not being manly enough to handle the keg last week, and uh, then we go to a promo off with Wade Barrett, who talks about uh, the nature of uh, winds of change in WWE and being the first British champion ever in the, or English champion in the history of WWE, world champion that is. And the amazing part about that, they're in London, gee, who wins that on a crowd vote? Big surprise there. So obviously they were stacking the deck in his general direction, at least to a point. Then we go into a bunch of raw highlights, which is kind of wasteful. Um, Straight Edge Society, which is CM Punk's uh, series of pros, for lack of a better term. Uh, CM Punk being the main pro, but I guess the Straight Edge Society being mini-mentors. Um, basically telling uh, Darren Young to shape up or ship off, uh, as it were. And then we see uh, a match, which is amazing, since we're about uh, 28 minutes into a 40 five-minute program here. Uh, again, such a waste of time. I can't believe anybody watched this at the time when it aired. It just doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, um, Wade Barrett manages to uh, come in and uh, uh, go at an adversary of the moment. Barrett, of course, the guy they're pushing big. He's been kind of voted number one pro for a bit uh, for a while, and uh, Christian, which is one of the pros for one of the other rookies, uh, is his opponent here. Decent match, worth going out of your way to see just this match if you wanted to spot check for the match, because Wade Barrett and Christian 
certainly has uh, a good um, flow to it if you just want a single one-off match. Barrett uses his power early, doesn't really get all he wants on it, but uh, Jericho at ringside cheering on his his uh, rookie Barrett. Uh, Heath Slater, who is Christian's rookie, is out there with him. Uh, Jericho also does commentary in the middle here. Uh, Christian gets uh, overpowered for the majority of the match. Good storytelling there. Uh, actual leg hooks, which is rare in this day and age. Uh, anyway, Christian goes to the top and uh, hits a top rope drop kick. Also does a slide through, and um, Christian eventually gets uh, things going back in his general way, um, and uh, ultimately, you know, Jericho tries to get in and interfere, but uh, Christian gets a victory pretty quickly. Uh, the Miz makes fun of Daniel Bryan's I inept promo ability, doesn't make him a star. David Otunga gets access to Access Hollywood, apparently, according to The Miz. Don't know if that was a real thing at the time. Eleven years ago, don't remember something that insignificant being a thing. But um, anyway, Miz making fun of Daniel Bryan, proving why their feud went on for the whole time they were there. And who knows how real some of it was or not. Anyway. Uh, Skip Sheffield and Daniel Bryan are here. Uh, Miz is there with Daniel Bryan as his crow. Re William Regal is Skip Sheffield's crow. I don't know if the idea was to make him appear somewhat, uh, uh, you know, somewhat, um, uh, I guess, semi-professional, but it ends up being that uh, Regal takes the match with Daniel Bryan, which is uh, not Skip Sheffield. Sheffield's just there to watch, apparently, or something such. Anyway, good match. William Regal is a guy that I love. He, uh, he wasn't in the best of physical shape at the time, but there was a mentorship between these two behind the scenes, which does come through in the match. Daniel Bryan hitting a running forearm and a, and a drop kick after rolling through an, a couple of arm locks and a German suplex. And uh, I, Regal's selling. If you are an independent guy who needs to learn how to sell, Watching William Regal probably on your to-do list. Uh, Regal is is phenomenal. Gets a, a couple of suplexes. Miz looks nervous on the outside. Regal hits uh, offense, both with running knees and the like that that look convincing, and actually wins with a knee to the side of the head. Uh, and again, Daniel Bryan has yet to win in this particular environment. Um, then we go to more highlight stuff. And then Darren Young comes out. Darren Young, uh, last ranked uh, amongst the eight pros, and uh, Luke Gallows makes his way out. I guess the threat was that uh, uh, Young would um, lose his hair if he doesn't beat Gallows here. Hard shots by Gallows, and, and Young, they're trying to get sympathy on Young. That's easy to see. The fans aren't necessarily fully behind it, but they're not completely against it either they're somewhere caught in the middle which is which is the apathy that current wwe fans have today anyway punk on the outside with serena deeb with her head shaved true dedication to uh that run there uh young tries to fight back a little bit fires back a little bit and gets dominated for the very short match in, in, ac akin to uh, and again being laid across the top ropes as if he's uh Virtually nothing to write home about. Uh, fall away slam by Luke Gallows. Gallows, of course, Gallows and Anderson in TNA and uh, AEW now. Still around all these years later. Slip on a banana peel win by Darren Young. And although CM Punk doesn't like to admit it, the fact that he did it is acknowledged as, as well. Punk raises his hand begrudgingly and uh, looks to Gallows almost a bit surprised. As we close this particular edition of the, AE, uh, the NXT Review Series. We'll be back with more right after this.